surgeries, I've had the flu, I've had COVID, and um, I didn't diet, or didn't diet, I don't really diet, I just try to eat right, but I didn't eat right, I laid around a lot, I got a little depressed because of the situation I was in, but um, I finally got my studio in order, um, and I just want to share the journey with y'all and get everyone to where they can work out. Um, so these workouts are going to be for anyone who's been sedentary for a long time and needs to build stability back up. Uh, I know there's a lot of people out there that, you know, are want to get into fitness and just don't know where to begin. So this is for you guys. Um, and anyone who's even into fitness really needs to go through the stability journey, uh, you know, every few months. You should say in each phase, like four to six weeks. So this is the st stability phase from the National Academy of Sports medicine that's where i'm certified through i'm a certified personal trainer yoga instructor nutrition coach um so we'll just jump right into it so the first thing we're going to do is use this little guy um the foam roller and you can get these for five bucks at five below they're really awesome so a lot of people um if you you'll notice if you've ever tried stretching or uh and, or if you have sciatica um a big problem, a big cause of this is if you've had any kind of lower body injury, you're going to try to overcompensate one side for the other to stop putting um, pressure on the side that has that injury, has that pain. So it lengthens the side that has the pain and tightens the side that, um, that you're using more. So I had plantar fasciitis surgery back in uh, 2012. It really put a number on me, um, and apparently my hips are so far out of line that they're just really bad. But anyway, to get back to it. So, um, a lot of that is caused by you have an overactive glute muscle here. So, I'm going to show you how to do this. So, you're just going to lay the foam roller on the ground and put your hip over on it and just roll roll a little bit and until you feel that really a sensation not not pain you don't want to feel pain but it is sort of like pain <laughs> so you just want to roll around until you find that and once you get to that little sore spot you sit on it you stay on that um, position so I'm just gonna sit here and I like to actually fold my knee over to get into it a little more and you can rock back and forth if it gets to where you don't feel it so much you can move around a little bit just to see where you feel that sore spot You want to hold it for at least 30 seconds. So after I get that muscle stretched out, <clears throat> I'm going to move it to the side and I'm going to do uh, figure four. So I'm going to wrap my right foot over my left knee and make sure you pull your toes back and just push yourself up into it here. Really flex or stretch that outer glute. You want to hold these stretches for 30 seconds as well. Static, static stretching is not really a necessity unless you um, have some sort of muscle imbalance. Before you work out, um, dynamic stretching like squats and leg swings, arm swings, things like that are more valuable to your workout instead of the static stretching. But like I said, I have a muscle imbalance in my hip, so I'm doing the static stretching. And you wouldn't believe how many people actually have this imbalance. 
but mine mine has just gone way too far because I didn't know I had it. I went into CrossFit, I did all these things, and um, it ended, ended up making the muscle amounts way worse. So it's just a, it's called the cumulative, cumulative injury cycle. You just keep injuring that muscle over and over and over until it pulls everything out of line. You get adhesions in that muscle. All right, so that's been about 30 seconds and um, not to take up a lot of time, but you usually do that two or three times. Um, you usually do it two or three times after the workout too, because this is one of the main things you want to work on because if you have a muscle imbalance, it's really going to throw your form off, going to throw all your ability off. So anyway, we'll get right back to it. So a lot of people also um, who have been sedentary a long time have an anterior pelvic tilt. And that is when your hamstrings are lengthened, chronically lengthened from sitting down and your hip flexors are tight. So I'm going to show you how to take care of that issue. So I'm going to put the foam roller down. And y'all excuse the paint on my hands. We painted my studio, so it hasn't come off yet. It's been like three days. All right, so like your hip flexor is right up here, like right on the outside of your, you get your hip bone, but it can go below it, beside it. Just feel when you get down on the foam roller. Make sure you can see me here. Yep. Um, just roll until you feel that tightness. Mine are very tight. So I'm going to just sit with it about 30 seconds, about five deep breaths if you don't have a timer. So when your hip flexors are tight for all you ladies out there, when you have this anterior pelvic tilt, it um, deactivates your glute muscles and you won't be able to build those glute muscles as uh, much as you do. I know the glutes are super important to most ladies, you know, we all want to that nice round booty. So I'm also uh, going through a certification for corrective exercise science, which is part of what we're doing right here. So that's about 30 minutes and I like to go down the quadriceps a little bit too because you know all those muscles connect and it, it is a little bit painful. Just roll. So what the foam rolling does is help that muscle to release and it massages those adhesions that you've formed in the muscles. And you actually don't even have to have a foam roller. You can use um, a massager. So after I've foam rolled, I'm gonna take some uh, hip flexor stretches. And you guys know I'm a yoga instructor as well. So I like to take the runner's pose, really lift that back leg up. So you're flexing the glute to release the front of the leg here. Hold that a few breaths. And come up onto the front knee and push the torso away to really stretch it all up through here. Because all of this will be tight from sitting so much and I like to drop my knee down. You can use a strap or whatever you have handy and pull your right foot in to your glutes. Sink your hips down, really open up that chest. You should feel the stretch up from your knee going all the way up to your, I think that's your quad, I can't even say the word. There's a muscle in there that connects though. Do that will stretch that too. All right, so that's been about 30 seconds. We're going to do the other side. Just roll around till you find that sore spot. See if there's anyone watching. I don't think it tells. So I'm 
once you get that little spot, you just, just sit in it. seconds so I'm going to move the foam roller out of the way send my right foot forward lift that knee you don't have to lift the knee I just like to get a pretty flexible so I just like to get the most of the stretch you can bounce into it just to get it going just make sure you're beginning to fill it in that hip flexor and then push up into it And hold that left leg in. And we'll go ahead and we'll take a ragdoll pose and fix some things on here. Guys, my next video will be better. I'm just trying to get the hang of it right now. Just trying to see if I can tell if anyone is watching. If you're watching, say hi. <laughs> okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, oh, and the foam roller, if you have uh, tight muscles anywhere else, you can do your lats, you can do your low back, you can do your, um, your hamstrings, your calf muscles. Doing your calf muscles is wonderful if uh, you have plantar fasciitis and you really got to, you know, everything connects there. So you want to tighten all that up. All right, so the next thing you would do, and I'm going to skip, you can do this on your own. You want to do some cardio. Cardio is so important to your life. Uh, you want to keep that heart healthy. Cardio actually also keeps your body in a constant state of fat burning. So you want to do that cardio. You can walk, you can do HIT, you can do LIST. I have some wonderful videos, very short beginner videos called LIT on my yoga channel. So um, you can do those, you can do the elliptical, rower, just anything that you're going to be in a constant motion to get that heart rate up. So from there, we're going to start uh, with our warm up. So we're going to get onto the floor. And we're going to do what's called a bridge. So this is going to give you some stability in the hips, some in the stomach, the core. So lay down, bring your feet in. Just see if you can touch your heels here. That's how you know how far away you need to be. Push your shoulders down, keep your neck straight, and just lift your hips slowly. We'll do this 15 times, 15, 14. 13, 12, 11, really push down with the heels, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, Five, four, three, two, and one. So the next thing we're going to do is the balance reach. No, I'm sorry. We're going to do the cobra. So what you're going to do is lay down on the floor. Let me get to where you can see me sideways. Let's see. Get right here. 
head to the floor and you're going to use your up, uh, lower back. Don't push into your hands. Just use your low back to lift you up. Try not to squeeze your glutes here either. You're using your low back. So that was 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, Two and one. So now we're going to do the uh, balance reach, and this is a little bit difficult of an exercise, and um, so it's uh, really stabilizing the leg and the hip. Um, so if you can't do, we'll do the beginner one first. So you can just tap your toe down here, your back toe. You're going to be using this front left leg. You're going to try not to keep your uh, you're going to try to keep your knee from going out past your toe too far. I like to either um, send my left arm out to the side. So what I'm going to do is just go down. It's sort of a lunge. Touch. Come up. We're going to go for eight. So to, to make it a little harder, to really use that stability, you're going to do one leg. And send the right leg back as you go down. We're going to do eight. So that's seven. These are difficult for anybody. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Those are pretty difficult. So I'm going to go to the other side. Tap that toe back if you're not comfortable standing on one leg yet. Right arm out and down. Eight. Seven. Six. So you're bending the knee, not bending over at the waist. You have to bend over the waist slightly, but you really want to use that leg. <clears throat> Six. Five. Put your hand on your hip, whatever you want to do. Four. Three. Woo. Go as slow as you need to to keep your balance. Two. And one. All right, so now we're going to do um, some clams. <clears throat> do some more stability. Now first, we're going to do some push-ups. So, hardly anyone can do push-ups when you first start out. So, we're going to try the knee push-ups first. And instead of flaring your arms out to the side, you're going to have your elbows come back. <clears throat> really tighten your core. And just see if you can send your elbows back. First, you're going to push out of your chest. Really open up your shoulder blades and go down for one. Now, if you can't do this, you can go up on a bench for one. I'm going to grab a drink of water while I'm standing here. Or you can go on the wall for one. You're just going to really start using the chest and the back here. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back down. We'll do eight. 
One, two, three, four, five. All right, so now we'll do the clams. So you're gonna lay on your side. These are great to strengthen those hip muscles back out. Never realize how weak your hips are until you really have to use them. So really laying on that side. My legs are at a 90 degree angle. angle. Now I'm gonna lift my left leg, keeping my feet together. Place your arm down into the floor if you need to, and just lift slow for 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, Nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and then flip over to the other side. So this doesn't look like much of a workout, but boy, it sure will work you out. And as you progress, you can put a weight on your thigh. Here we go for 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, now we're going to go back to the beginning to the floor bridge. So lay down on your back. Bring your feet in where you can touch your heels. Now this is just the warm up, the stability part of the workout. So lift for 15, 14, 13, 12, really squeeze those glutes on the way up, 11, 10, 9, 8, Seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. So now we're going to do that cobra. Lay down on the belly. Bring your hips, your hands underneath your shoulders. Push those feet down into the floor. And try not to use, try to flex your glute muscles too much. So you wanna use your low back. We're strengthening our low back here. Bring your head down. Don't push into the floor. If you have to, you can lift your hands. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. And lower down. Now we'll do that single leg reach. We're going to take those push-ups out and save them for the full workout. All right. So we're going to start. I think we started on the left leg last time. So left hand on your hip. You can either touch that toe down or keep the leg lifted. Bend the knee. Go down slow. 
for eight. Seven, six, five, four, three, two. When you come up, you're going to work on straightening that leg, not hyperextending the knee, but straightening where you fill it in that glute muscle. Now the other side. So right hand to the hip, we're going to touch down with the left hand. Left knee up, or toe on the ground. Here we go. Eight. Do you have to do these slow? Seven. Six, five, four, three, two, and one, guys. I am right there with you working on the stability. I've been out for a while. I'm just about to go into phase two of my uh, strength training. So I'm still a little wobbly. <laughs> All right, so here we go, into the real workout. Now, you don't have to have a stability ball for this, but it is a lot better. Make sure you can uh, see me over here. So you can use this, you can use weights, or not use weights. I'm gonna use some very light three pounds, but three pounds when you're doing stability exercises. When you're doing stability exercises, you really need to go very light. So I'm gonna put the ball right at the middle of my back. So I can feel the ball right there at the arch of my low back. So when you go down, the ball is gonna roll up. I'm gonna, gonna bring my feet about hip distance. If you don't know what hip distance is, whenever you squat, do any kind of movement, hip distance, just take a jump. And where you land, that's your natural position. So that's hip distance for you. <clears throat> All right, so we're gonna do 15 of these. Hold the um, <laughs> dumbbells in each hand. Hips distance here. The ball is going to keep you stable and train your body into squatting right. So when you squat, want your shoulders tight, your back tight, keep your core tight, hold on to your weights, push down for 14. And when you come up, you're really squeezing those glutes and pushing down through the heels. 14, now I'm gonna add the arms. So these are done very slow. 13. 12. 11. 10. and one. All right, that was the first exercise, our squats. Now we're going to move into the chest, so we're going to do those push-ups, 
Need to do a wall, use the wall. I'm gonna do them on my knees since this is stability. And I'm not sure if I could do 15 anymore now <laughs> without my knees. So here we go. Push out of the shoulders, open up those shoulder blades, go down and up 15, 14, in on the way down, out on the way up. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, Four, three, two, and one. So the next thing we're going to do is a standing row. I'm going to use my light weights. <clears throat> so when you're doing stability, it's better to do one side at a time to really work on those muscles. I have a lot of instability in my left shoulder. So when your hips are throw off your body, when one foot throws the body off, throws your hips off, throws your shoulder off, it actually can even cause neck pain. So I deal with a lot of instability in my left shoulder because of my left foot. So what we're going to do is a row. You're going to bring your right knee to a bench. You can even be down on your knee like this and bring that elbow back. You don't want to bring your elbow back very far. You're going to really focus on that muscle in between the shoulder blades there. You want to feel that squeeze. This is one reason why you're starting off light because you want to focus when you bring that weight in, focus on that squeeze. So you want about a one second hold at the top. That was four, I think. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. Eleven. 12, 13, 14, 15. Now go to the other side. Make sure you're bracing your core, bracing your glute in every exercise. And you're not really coming back more you're more squeezing, squeezing that back muscle. So 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, so next to shoulders, so grab your weights. You can use cans, you can use water bottles. <clears throat> so what I like to do when I have to do, um, when you're first starting, I like to do one set of one arm and one set with both arms. So on uh, when you're alternating arms, I like to sit down. So you're going to bring your dumbbells about shoulder height right here. You're going to raise your shoulder up. And then my, rope, my dumbbell is rotating out 
my palm facing forward, come down. So I can really feel this in my left shoulder. Like I said, I have a lot of shoulder instability. It's two. I'm gonna go real slow. Three. Four. Now it's time for the biceps. I'm gonna grab a drink of water. So <clears throat> if you wanna do this workout later, I will be downloading it, uploading it to my YouTube channel. All right, so when you're doing your bicep curls, of course you have your feet about hip distance. Take a little jump, see where your feet are. You're gonna just slightly bend your knees and that's gonna cause you to brace your core, brace your glutes, pull your shoulders back, keep your elbows hooked right there at your sides. And you're really not gonna let your arms go down further than about right here because you wanna keep that constant tension on the bicep. Stand up, you're gonna lean forward slightly, brace everything, and lift slow. At the top, like flex that bicep to where you can really feel that bicep head moving. That's two, three, slow and steady, four, five, six, seven, Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. So now we're gonna move on to a lower body exercise. Let me look at my notes here. <clears throat> we're gonna do step up to balance. So when I'm doing full body workouts, I like to um, alternate between upper body and lower body. And it's called the peripheral heart rate action system. It helps you burn more calories. So you don't have to have a step to do this. You can just do lunges. So if you wanna just do lunges, you don't have your step. Just bring your left leg forward. It's gonna be somewhat the, like the balance reach we did. So you're gonna keep your knee from going past your toe. Really push down into that heel, lower the back knee, push up through that heel, and bring your right knee in. Go down, this is slow. Come in. So I'm gonna do it on the bench. You may not be able to see me. I'm gonna raise the camera up just slightly. Maybe I won't mess it up. So I'm gonna start on my left leg. I'm 
One, two, three, four, five. And as you come up, really push down through that heel, straighten the leg. Don't hyperextend the knee, but really feel it in that glute muscle. Four, five, six, seven, and eight. Now the other side. One. to the chest. So now we already did the push-ups. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit out of practice here. So we're going to do the triceps. <clears throat> so you're going to lay down on your back, grab your weights, <clears throat> pull your shoulders down into the floor, and your elbows are going to be pointing straight up or even maybe a little bit further back. So just point them straight up. You're going to keep your elbows straight up. So when you lift, feel that tricep squeeze, triceps to the back of your arm. Slow. Brace your core. It's two. Three. Four. Six, seven, remember squeeze that tricep at the top, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. All right. <clears throat> so we're going to go back to the beginning. What did we start with? We started with the ball squat. Grab you another drink of water. So important to always stay hydrated. Grab your ball, or you can just do a regular squat. No weights, or weights, whichever you wanna do. So when you squat, get your feet right. Do a little hop, see where your feet should be. When you go down, you can also do this on a bench or a chair. You just act like you're sitting down here. So one, two, and I'm gonna do it without the ball. Three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 
16. And 15. All right, so now we're gonna do the shoulders again. So we're gonna do both shoulders this time. We're gonna stand on one foot. We'll do half on one foot, half on the other. So this is the stability portion. So stand on your foot here. Bring your hands to about shoulder height. Go up slow. One. Two. You can bring your foot down and just lightly tap if you need to, if you're a little unstable. Four. Five. Six. Okay, the other side, stand on that left foot. Lift the right knee in. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. and 15. All right, so now we'll do that back exercise again. <clears throat> so this time we're gonna do a two arm row. So it's gonna be the same movement we use, but with both arms. So we're gonna take that hinge again, get your stance right, get your feet, hips distance. You're gonna bend the knees, flex the glutes, flex the core, pull your shoulders back, and then hinge forward. Bring your hands right out in front of your knees here. You're gonna pull the elbows back. And you're gonna pull those shoulder blades together to where you're flexing those muscles in between your shoulder blades. Feel that squeeze on the way up. So we'll go for 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, Three, two, and one. All right. So now we'll do the biceps one at a time. <clears throat> so we're going to do that same stance, or we could do one at a time this time. So let's do one at a time. Take that same stance, keep the tension on the bicep and lift. Really feel, we do this so you can really feel that individual squeeze in the bicep. That's 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, fifteen on each side. So fifteen, fourteen. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, I don't know if you guys could hear that, it was 
somebody driving by and they had their music so loud. It sounded like they were in my driveway. I think that's six, <laughs> five, four. Guys, take care of your hearing. Once it's gone, it's gone and it's never coming back. Two, and one. Every drum beat, every loud noise takes away a little bit more of your hearing. All right, so now we're gonna go back to those step ups or lunges, whichever you prefer. <clears throat> I'm gonna do the step ups because they're a little bit more challenging. So push down through that left heel, right leg in. That's one, slowly, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. I would do too many. I'm supposed to only do eight. It's the other side. Let's go. Eight, seven. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Sit down, get another drink of water. Now we're gonna do chest again. 15. <clears throat> 15. 14. 13 at the top. Squeeze that chest. 12. 11. 10. Nine. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, and one. All right, time for the triceps. This is the last exercise, guys. You know what? We didn't do any core. So we're going to do one more. We'll do one at a time here. So you're going to keep tension on that tricep muscle. Keep that the shoulders pressed down into the floor. Keep your elbows at about a 90 degree angle pointed towards the ceiling. So we'll go 30, 29. Fill that squeeze. 28. 27, 26, 25, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, Six, five, four, three, 
two, and one. All right. So we're going to do just a little bit of core. Now, if you have been very sedentary and you know that your core is pretty weak, like you don't even think you can do a sit-up, I'm going to show you this marching. This is what it's called. So push your low back down into the floor. You're going to tilt your pelvic bowl forward. So the low back pushes down into the floor. So your core is tight. Push your hands down to the floor. Just raise one leg at a time. One, two, three. Now, if that's too easy for you, we'll do some crunches. So bring the head, hands behind the head, thumbs behind the ears. Still tilt that tailbone up and we'll crunch for 15. You guys keep doing your marching if you need to. 14. 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4. Breathe out on the way up. Three, two, and one. Now, since we didn't add them into our routine, we'll rest it for just a few minutes, for a few seconds. You should have about a one minute rest between each exercise. If you're doing upper body at one time, instead of switching lower, back and forth, if you're doing upper body, then you have to take those minute breaks in between your exercise to just give the muscles recovery so you can push more. So when you're switching between upper body and lower body, you can keep a constant motion going, burning more calories and making your workout short. So that's one reason I like to do the peripheral heart rate action system whenever you're first starting out. Um, also, I'm going to be uploading a video on how to calculate your calories um, on the National Academy of Sports Wet Medicine website and um, put them into my fit fitness pal so you can um, track your food. But you always want to keep your, um, if you're wanting to lose weight, anyway, you want your calories in to be less than the calories you're burning. So your body is in a deficit. So you're burning fat, losing weight. And on the other hand, if you want to gain, if you want to gain muscle, you need your calories to be in a surplus but you need your calories distributed evenly as well, or you're gonna gain fat and you're gonna gain what you don't want to gain. All right, let's get do the second set. We've had enough rest here. All right, tilt that tailbone up. Inhale, exhale, 15, 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, one. Oh, okay. So now we're going to stretch it out a little bit. Well, if you were in a gym, you would be doing some more cardio. Do 10 to 15 minutes before, 10 to 15 minutes after. Split it up a little bit. It's not as bad when you split it up a little bit and it just goes by a lot faster to me. Or if you're somebody that likes to get it all in at one time, get it over with. You go do you. <laughs> but, Okay, so we're just gonna do a few cat cows here. Stretch out that stomach. So bring your knees under the hips, shoulders, hands underneath the shoulders, drop the belly, lift the head. Inhale, hold. Really stretch out that stomach, those crunches were hard. And then exhale, open up those shoulder blades, stretch that upper back. 
Tuck the tailbone under, tuck the chin. And then inhale. Cat. And exhale, cow. Inhale, cat. And exhale, cow. Come to neutral. Now I'm gonna take a rag doll pose. I really like to stretch out that lower back. Most people have a lot of compression in their lower back. So get your feet hips distance. Really generously bend those knees. We're gonna stretch out those shoulders too. So bring your hands around your back, interlace your fingers and open up your chest here. So now I'm gonna hinge from the waist, bend, generous bend in those knees and let my torso just hang down onto my knees. You'll feel a stretch in the hamstrings, should go through your glutes into your low back and really take that weight into your torso, into the fronts of your toes not into the heels, into the tops of your toes. And then let the fist hang overhead. Really stretch out those shoulders. So this is one of my favorite stretches. So we're in the cool down phase now of our workout. Most of us have super tight chests from driving, sitting, we're always in a hunched over position. So we really want to strengthen those back muscles and open the chest to keep our posture right. So your back muscles and neck muscles aren't weakened. All right, lift back up. So I want to show you guys one more thing. We'll end this workout. So if you have some blocks, you have pillows. For those of you who have the imbalance in your hips, so my right hip is worse, it's tighter than my left hip. <clears throat> my left hip sits, sticks out further. So I'm gonna take one block and place it underneath my left knee here, or underneath my left thigh, like right before the bend of my knee. And I'm gonna take my other block, lay down, <clears throat> and place it right underneath my right the right side of my sacrum and it's pushing my hips so you're going to lay in this position for really as long as you want but at least about a minute and it will slowly begin to start adjusting your hips back into normal and you may feel some discomfort you know through when you first start working out when you first start loosening muscles and moving things around tightening muscles that have been lengthened um, You'll, you will feel some discomfort at first, but just stay with it. Um, if it's bad, I would go see a corrective exercise specialist, personal trainer, um, physical therapist. Just keep your body healthy, guys. Our healthcare professionals are very knowledgeable and, and they will help you. Just don't give up, never give up. So I wanna thank you guys for checking out my video. I promise they will get better with time. And we'll be uploading this video to YouTube. So stay tuned for more. Namaste. Stay strong.